Hi everybody, welcome to our first lecture on projectile motion. Basically, motion in two dimensions, two directions. In other words, motion that is both horizontal and vertical at the same time. So it's obviously going to involve the ideas of linear motion, but how we combine them together. So the way we typically talk about projectile motion is we ask a question. How do we shoot a monkey out of a tree? Now, this is sort of a classic physics story. The idea is that we're walking through the jungle, and high up in the tree is a monkey hanging from a branch. Now, we're far below and way off in the distance, and so being hunters, I guess, we're going to shoot the monkey. Now, the monkey sees us and knows, because it's a very smart monkey, that we're going to shoot at it. So the monkey, being a really smart monkey, thinks, well, I know that light travels faster than sound. I guess he must have been a track runner or something. And thinks, well, I'll look for the smoke from the gun, because that'll mean I'll know when a shot happened. And as soon as I see the smoke from the gun, I'll let go of the tree and drop to the ground. Now, luckily, we're smarter than this monkey, because we know that the moment we fire is going to let go. Now, again, keep in mind that we're a good distance away. So the question is, where do we aim? Do we aim above the monkey, aim below the monkey, or aim straight at the monkey? Okay? Again, knowing, again, that the moment we fire, the monkey intends to let go of the tree. Think about it for a second. Well, to tackle this problem, we have to talk about the fact that in projectile motion, we're dealing with both horizontal motion and vertical motion at the same time. In other words, we've got to deal with vectors. Okay, in both directions. Now, let's look at another example. Let's say you're driving down the road in a convertible, and for the moment we'll say there's no air resistance, and you had a ball in your hand, and you threw it straight up in the air. Where would it land? Let's take a quick look at this example in a video. Okay, here's a demonstration of the part where a car is moving along and horizontally at a constant velocity, and a ball is shot straight up in the air from it. Now, because the horizontal motion and the vertical motion are independent of each other, the ball is still traveling horizontally at the same speed as the car. So watch what happens. It clearly lands back in the car where it should. Let's watch that again in slow motion. So, as you saw in the video, the ball still landed right back in the car. Now, the reason why, you see, the car and the ball are stuck together initially, and they're traveling at a constant velocity in the horizontal direction, which means they're both moving forward to exactly the same speed. But the ball is then launched in the vertical direction at some speed. Now, if you remember from vertical motion, we know that when something is launched upward, the only thing that affects it is gravity once it's in the air. And gravity act only acts one way, which is directly downward. We also know that whatever speed this was initially launched at, that gravity is going to begin to slow that velocity down until it reaches the maximum height at which its vertical velocity is zero. And then gravity will turn it around at that point, because it stopped, and it will speed up until it finally comes back down at the same velocity, just in the opposite direction at which it was launched. But again, the only acceleration if, that affected it was gravity, which only acts downward, not forward. And again, the ball itself and the car continue to move forward at the exact same speed. So no matter what, the ball always remained directly over the car because they both move forward at the same exact speed. There is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. And that allows the ball to land right back into the cart. So what's so important about that? The important idea is that Horizontal motion and vertical motion are independent of each other. One does not necessarily affect the other. 
and that independence will allow us to really understand basically how we can shoot this monkey. So to start off, we're going to look at a particular example of projectile motion, and that's when we launch something exactly in the horizontal direction. In other words, the initial velocity is entirely in the horizontal direction. So, for example, let's say you take a cannon to the top of a 40 meter cliff, and you place your buddy in it, and you launch your buddy horizontally out at, let's say, a nice safe speed of 60 meters per second. Now, the path your buddy's going to follow is going to be like this, a sort of parabolic path. So let's launch him into some water, only slightly shark infested. Now, what your buddy might want to know, for example, is, well, how much time is he going to spend in the air? And then how far from the cliff into the water is he going to land? So, how do we deal with this? Well, first of all, knowing the fact that if I launch something horizontally, I am not launching it vertically. So there is no vertical velocity initially, at the very beginning. Now, that doesn't mean throughout the whole flight, because clearly you're going to start moving downward. But how much time it takes to hit the ground turns out to be based on the acceleration, and the only acceleration here is going to be gravity, which we're going to continue to use negative 10 meters per second squared, and then the height above the ground. Now, notice this has nothing to do with how fast you are actually launched. Okay. So it turns out that any objects that start from the exact same height and are launched horizontally or even dropped straight down will all land at the same time. And that's because they'll have the same vertical initial velocity, zero, the same vertical acceleration, negative 10, and if they start at the same height, the same vertical displacement. Here's a video example of just that. There's a classic example in projectile motion that says, if you were to hold a bullet in your hand and put a similar bullet in a gun and point the gun horizontally, fire the gun and drop the bullet. Even though the bullet that is fired goes a very long horizontal distance, both bullets would actually land on the ground at the same time. Now the reasoning being is that once the bullet leaves the gun and once it leaves your hand, they both undergo the exact same acceleration, gravity. And gravity only acts one way, down. And because they both start at the same height, they start with the same vertical velocity, zero, because the bullet shot horizontally. They have the same vertical displacement, the height, and they have the same acceleration. So they have to land at the same time. Now, this demonstration is supposed to sort of mimic that. So what you have here are sort of two balls here. One is on this part of the platform. Now, when the flip switch is flipped, it will simply drop this one straight down. But at the same time, this thing's going to knock this one forward, launching it horizontally. So, not only look what happens, but listen to what happens as they land. So you'll notice that they both landed at exactly the same time. Let's watch that again, only this time in slow motion. Again, you can clearly see where they both hit the table at exactly the same time, even though one was dropped straight down and the other was shot horizontally. Now, where it hits the ground, though, displacement, well, that's in the horizontal direction. So that definitely has to do with how fast you're going and that time. But keep in mind that in the horizontal direction, your acceleration is going to be zero. And this is hugely important in projectile motion. In all projectile motion, your horizontal acceleration is zero. Because once you're in the air, the only thing that affects you is gravity. And that only acts in the vertical direction. And again, horizontal and vertical are independent of each other. So, your displacement will be based on how fast you're launched and how much time you spend in the air. 
So let's continue to look at this example of your friend in the cannon. Now, I have a way of sort of helping us separate our horizontal and vertical motion. What I like to do is to set up sort of a little chart. One for the vertical direction and one side for the horizontal direction. And then I want to consider all the things that we've learned in motion. Initial velocity, acceleration, time, displacement, final velocity. And then I'm going to do what I call putting in the things that I know in the right spot. So first of all, the most important part, the most important concept in projectile motion is the only acceleration that can exist is gravity. And the only direction it acts is in the vertical. So that means right away, I can always put in, no matter what situation I have, negative 10 for acceleration in the vertical and 0 in the horizontal. That's always going to be true. Now in this case, since I'm launching the person horizontally, I am not launching them vertically at the beginning. So there's no initial velocity in the y direction, but I am launching them 60 meters per second in the x direction. Well, that's easy enough. Now, if my initial velocity in the x is 60 and there's no acceleration in the x direction, then my final velocity in x must also be 60. Zero acceleration, constant velocity, but only in the horizontal direction, only on that x column. In the y column, it's very different because there is an acceleration. One other value I know, well, I've got this 40 meters here. 40 meters is a displacement downward in the vertical direction. So under my displacement in the y, I'm going to write negative 40 because our friend is going to drop 40 meters at the end. OK, so the idea now is to figure out what I'm looking for, in this case, time and horizontal displacement. Well, it turns out in this case, the area I know the best information is in the vertical direction. You see, in the horizontal, I have a zero acceleration. And my final velocity is equal to my initial. That's not going to really help me very much. But in the y direction, I'm given an initial of zero, an acceleration of negative 10, and a displacement of negative 40. And I want to find time. Well, if I use my displacement equation, That has everything I need. My displacement is negative 40. The initial velocity is 0. So that kind of gets rid of that part right there. Acceleration is negative 10 times squared. Multiply through by 2. Divide by negative 10, because I can't have negative time. And then the last thing is to take the square root of both sides. And so the time in the air is 3.46 seconds. Now, time cannot split. In other words, there is 3.4 seconds in the y and 3.4 seconds, 6 seconds in the x. Time is the one thing you're allowed to go on both sides of the chart, but it's the only thing. But now that I know time, I can now go over to the x side of the column, and I can find that horizontal displacement. So it turns out I can use that same displacement equation, but now I'm looking for a horizontal displacement. So I can only use the numbers in the x column. I can't use any from the y column. So my initial velocity in the x is 60 for a time of 3.46 seconds. And then my acceleration is 0, making that whole second half 0, giving a total displacement of 207.6 meters. And there we have our answers. So again, we're still doing linear motion. It's just that we've separated them into their horizontal and vertical parts because they are independent of each other, allowing us to sort of find that out. So, in that example with the horizontal launch versus a straight drop, we saw that they hit at the same time. So how does that relate to our monkey? Well, in the example with the monkey, our monkey is high up in a tree, swinging away, 
and we're somewhere far away down on the ground. And again, the moment we fire, the monkey's going to let go of the tree. But if we were to temporarily change the situation, where instead we were up at the exact same level as the monkey, we now know we would have to aim straight at the monkey. And the reason being that the moment we fire, our shot is going to be pulled downward by gravity. But the moment the monkey lets go, it's also going to be accelerated downward by that same gravity. And since they both start at the same height, they must fall at the same rate, and therefore they have to meet here at the exact same time. So we definitely know if we're on the same height as the monkey, we must aim at the monkey. But we're not. We're somewhere down below. So how is that going to change things? Well, we'll find out in our next lecture when we deal with angled launches.